artificial intelligence winners and losers in the brave new world an important talk like this involves a lot of preparation there are a lot of critical decisions to be made and in a pandemic there is a big dilemma the real social dilemma <laughs> do you go outside and get a haircut or do you get a home haircut and look funny like this Artificial intelligence is a very important topic but it's also a complex topic it means different things to different people and each of us has our own perception of what ai is and what ai's impact will be we are just like those blind men in the old fable trying to make sense of the elephant in the room called artificial intelligence a lot of anxiety about ai is because of these differing perceptions let us try and clear the confusion if you want to learn about a topic your first stop usually is Google. So let's go to Google and search for artificial intelligence. You can try this out now. But there are more than 130 million results for artificial intelligence. Too much information. Overwhelming. How about we pick a book? So let's go to Amazon and search for books on artificial intelligence. 40,000 books. Wow, information overload again. Or as Hal 9000 would say, I'm afraid I can't do that. Have you wondered how we form our opinions about AI? Who teaches the world about AI? I know the geeks and nerds among you are thinking about Professor Andrew Ying. <laughs> Not that I've had this haircut even before Zuckerberg. <laughs> Professor Andrew's courses on AI have about 3.4 million enrollments. But everyone who signs up for an online course knows we excel in what? we excel in dropping out <laughs> only about 3% complete the courses i'm sorry andrew we can't do that <laughs> then how does the world learn about ai from where do we get our knowledge there are two main sources the first one is hollywood <laughs> yes from movies Professor Arnold has taught more folks about AI than Professor Andrew. <laughs> These movies are all about humans versus evil robots, robots taking over the world, world domination, apocalyptic scenarios, robots that fight their creators. Sorry, I goofed up here. My bad. My apologies to all the Rajini fans. This definitely is super intelligence. <laughs> movies are also about love stories. They teach us how humans fall in love with AI and androids. Our relationship with AI, it's complicated. <laughs> These movies are great fun, but they're far from reality. I tell you, our professors are misleading us. <laughs> so we don't have machines or robots that have consciousness, free will, feelings and emotions or what we call artificial general intelligence. our next main source of misinformation <laughs> i mean information <laughs> the news media <laughs> the media they try hard but that business it's all about being sensational if hollywood is about the end of the world media is about the end of jobs So the media is preoccupied with how AI is overtaking humans, how AI will replace humans, how it will lead to massive job losses. Again, the reality is very different. Yes, AI is definitely getting better, but our fears of massive job losses to AI are overblown. In reality, media hypes up the current capabilities of AI. <laughs> the media narrative is that AI is a solution to practically everything under the sun. from tapping renewable energy to curing cancer from improving education to saving the planet from solving for climate change to ending world hunger don't believe me just read the newspaper <laughs> journalists also don't question whether ai is indeed the right solution to such problems media also does not acknowledge the debates about ai its side effects such as biases and unintended consequences to be sure AI is useful in many of these areas but 
is it really the hero or the sidekick? <laughs> to sum up, for Hollywood, AI is superhuman. For media, AI is a superpower. But these two narratives don't give us the real picture of AI. At this point in time, to give you a clear picture, I will discuss a few questions that are on the top of your mind. Things like, what actually is AI? What are the skills of the future? What's the advice for students? What's the advice for professionals? How should countries prepare as artificial intelligence becomes more widespread? Very tough questions. How I wish there was a well-read AI that can give us good answers to these questions. <laughs> Surprise, ladies and gentlemen, the next part of this TEDx talk will be given by AI. Yes, that's right. Media people watching, that's a good headline. AI gives a TED talk. <laughs> AI that is very well read. Yes, it has read all those millions of documents. <laughs> the AI answers these questions based on what it has seen in the millions of documents it has read. Yes, it's our high-tech version of monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> because the answers it gives range from the excellent to the unmentionable. <laughs> Humans are needed to separate the pearls of wisdom and the BS. The questions are mine, but the responses are from this AI software called GPT-3. A shout out to tech entrepreneur Fushar Kathar and the team at philosopherai.com, some of whose content I'll be using today. So let's go. Hello AI, let's start with the basics. Tell us a bit more about yourself. What is AI? Artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence is the science, science of making, of making machines, machines do things, things that, would that would require intelligence, intelligence if done by people. Artificial, artificial intelligence, intelligence is a simulation, simulation of human, of human intelligence, intelligence processes by machines. By machines. AI, AI is the ability is of computers, computers to digest, digest large amounts of data, data, which is which impossible, impossible for humans, humans at, that at that scale, scale and get to accurate results and decisions in a short period of time. The central tasks of AI include understanding natural language, recognizing objects and scenes in images, playing games, games and strategies. Hope you like my robot voice. <laughs> We're off to a good start, so let's continue. We all want to know how the nature of work will change as AI is more widely adopted and how we should prepare. So my next question is, what should employees do to succeed as jobs are increasingly being automated? The future of work will be a combination of automation, AI and human skills. The keys to success will be to get the right balance between the three, as well as to acquire the skills that machines and AI cannot do easily. Smaller Monkey, by the way, is GPT-2, the previous generation of this AI software. <laughs> A lot of our friends listening today are students. So this question is on their behalf. What courses should students study to be successful in the future? The future of education is not about acquiring siloed skills, but about acquiring skills that are relevant and transferable across a range of disciplines. This means that those who can operate in an interdisciplinary way using cross-disciplinary skills are the ones who will be most successful in the future. That's a very glib response. I know where it is coming from. I think this AI is a fresh MBA grad. has all the right words. It knows everything, yet it knows nothing. <laughs> By the way, this gyan is not free. <laughs> it costs about 5 rupees for each answer. <laughs> My MBA was so much more expensive. <laughs> ISB, we need to have a chat. <laughs> Here is the all important question. Which skills will be in greater demand in the next 5 to 10 years? In order to understand what skills can be in demand in the next 5 to 10 years, we need to know what kind of tasks will be done by machines. We can figure this out by looking at the components of the automation technology. We can think of automation as a three-level pyramid. At the top are super intelligent machines that are able to replace humans in almost all tasks. In the middle of the pyramid are machines that are able to replace humans in a specific type of task. Finally, 
at the bottom of the pyramid are machines that only replace humans in a very narrow category of tasks. Wow, that's a good response. I see what you're trying to do here. You're giving us a framework to think through. Hmm, that's what consultants do. <laughs> there is even the rule of three. <laughs> hey, McKinsey and other consultants, you better watch out. AI is coming after your work. <laughs> so here is a serious topic. We hear a lot about bias and discrimination because of AI software. So how can we reduce the bias in AI software? Bias can be found in three basic ways. It can either be built into the data that is used to train the algorithms, it could be the result of the algorithms themselves, or it could be in the people who train the algorithms. Algorithms are trained to make sense of the world using examples. If your training examples are biased, then so will be your algorithm. We should do everything we can to ensure that our training sets are as diverse as possible. We can reduce bias in machine learning by being more aware of the limitations and biases in our own thinking. Wow, that's a great response. I don't think I could have done a better job articulating that. So we've talked about the individuals, students, employees. So let's talk at the country level now. What should countries do to benefit fully from artificial intelligence? There are many things that countries should do to benefit fully from artificial intelligence. First, they should invest in AI. It is important to realize that AI is not just a technology. It's a new way of thinking about problems and solving them. It's a new way of organizing people and machines to work together. It's a new way of doing business. Second, they can also invest in education. It is important that people learn to work with machines. It is also important that they learn to work with other people. <laughs> Third, they can invest in research. AI is a fast moving field. It is important that we understand what is happening, why it is happening and what it means. We should also invest in AI for the public good. We should invest in AI for the environment, AI for healthcare, and AI for the arts. Wow, that's like AI man ki baat. <laughs> Niti Aayog and other think tanks. I hope you were taking good notes. <laughs> it's been nice chatting with you, but it's time to wrap up this interview. I had a lot of fun, but one last question. It's about the future, your future. Where do you see yourself five years down the road? <laughs> okay, what does the future of AI look like? The future of AI will not look like Skynet from the Terminator films. <laughs> it will be quite benign as long as we make conscious choices about the future of AI. We need to make sure that the benefits of AI are broadly shared and that we use these technologies to support the need for care, compassion and creativity. We want to have a future with more jobs and fewer people being left behind. That concludes the first ever TED talk on AI by AI. One more thing. As humanity, now we are at that crucial juncture, that tipping point at the creation of AI. Humans are able to show empathy, compassion and morality. These are not traits which AI possesses. Humans are able to form emotional relationships with other humans. This is something that AI will never be able to do. Humans also have the power of imagination, which enables us to create new concepts and ideas. Artificial intelligence is a great tool that can help us in many ways. But if we fixate on a vision of AI that is not here or may never be here, or if we uncritically cheerlead or overstate its capabilities, we will miss a golden chance to make a better AI. AI is not a superhuman. AI is not a superpower. Just like electricity, it's a great tool that we can harness effectively. If we use AI to augment our capabilities, if we make AI more inclusive, if we use AI responsibly, humanity will be the ultimate winner. Thank you.